one. Hi, Kyle here, Angry Archaeology. I'm here at Tabor Hill Park in Scarborough. Now behind me is a large mound, but this is in fact uh, not a naturally occurring mound. This is a Wendat Huron burial mound or a Wendat Huron ossuary. Now this was built uh, sometime around the 14th century and in um, 19 it wasn't until 1956 when the city of toronto was building the highway uh the 401 highway that they decided to take soil from this uh, mound which they thought was naturally occurring however uh during excavation human remains began to be recovered along with grave goods and the site was designated a historical site and later identified as a wendat here on burial mound now the wendat here on were people who were uh Linguistically, they spoke the same language as the Iroquois. However, they lived on the north side of Lake Ontario and the Iroquois Five Nations, later to be Six Nations, lived on the south side. Uh, both of these groups were um, agriculturalist. So the Wendat Huron uh, people uh, behind me, they lived in Longhouse Villages. In the year 2000, there was a nearby Longhouse Village that was discovered in association with this site. And so the Wendat Huron, like the Iroquois and like the Adena culture and other Mississippian cultures before them, they would build mounds away from their village. Now, uh, one aspect of uh, Wendat Huron culture, uh, as well as um, Iroquois culture, which is unique, is the reason why they would build this was that uh, the people of the settlement would live and uh, they would eventually die and they were buried in individual graves. However, the cities themselves would be uh, moved about every 20 to 50 years max. These these uh, settlements of the Wendat here on the Iroquois, there are about two or 3,000 people, 5,000 max. And within uh, the 20 to 50 year time frame, the resources would be depleted so they would have to move. I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, but there are also ritualistic reasons and ceremonial reasons behind why uh, af uh, after the 20 to 30 years, or uh, within the, I believe it's about modern Wendat Hiroquan, modern descendants practice something called the Feast of the Dead every 10 to 15 years or at least they used to I'm not sure if they still do uh, but this was a reinterment of burials from the settlement individual graves into a ceremonial um, communal um, ossuary and at these events these were um, fest the Feast of the Dead these were festive community events lots of uh, goods were exchanged um, uh, uh, grave goods were interred and uh, behind me in this mound here is about 535 individuals thought to be from sometime from around uh, the year 1300 so that would have been 300 years uh, into the practice of agriculture in this region and um, the Wendat here on people uh, feast of the dead ceremonies one aspect that changed uh, post contact was that grave goods became more important and more goods were exchanged and what the Wendat Huron the people who built this they became allied with the French uh, against the English and the Iroquois Five Nation to the south in addition to the Wendat Huron the um, French were allied with 18 other um, uh, tribes against the, Wend uh, the Iroquois and the British to the south this was known as the Beaver Wars and from 1601 to, or 1609 to 1701, uh, the Beaver Wars concluded and the British began to dominate the region along with the uh, Five Nation Iroquois and the Wendat Huron people. Uh, so about a couple centuries after this was built, um, they ended up uh, relocating with the, the Catholic Jesuits to the area now known as the Quebec City and where the, uh, the Wendat Huron today uh, live there and their population was around 5,000 today thankfully uh, but before um, before contact it's estimated that their population was somewhere between 20 to 25,000 however with the introduction of disease and war and the increase of conflict brought about by European uh, interventions in the region the British the Dutch and the French uh, the populations after the Beaver War 1701 was uh, uh, pretty decimated, uh, but thankfully they are alive uh, well today uh, in the area of Quebec City now called uh, Heronia and um, One thing that I, I I believe to suspect one of the reasons why uh, These communal ossuaries were buried. I think there was a, a an economic dimension 
as to why the single graves were taken and they were reburied in a communal context. Uh, I believe it has something to do with the, um, the, the, the settlements being forcefully uh, relocated due to resource depletion. Um, so I, I believe that this was one of the reasons why this was um, created was to signal a um, uh, the community members would have a, a communal uh, resting place uh, post resettlement of their of their city. So it was essentially you were, you were, they were taking a, a cemetery and they were turning it into a communal ossuary and then they were moving elsewhere. Um, one of the largest um, sites uh, called the Draper site of the Wendat Huron, it, it was located in Pickering, Ontario, and that was about 5,000 people. Um, and now, since this is angry archaeology, I wanted to mention that Tabor Hill, although this is treated like a park, uh, this is in fact not a park, this is the sacred place of the Wendat Huron Nation, Wendat Huron Confederacy. And so, uh, during the winter times, it is not uh, advisable. You really shouldn't be permitted to uh, toboggan down this hill, although many people do. But thankfully, the park is today is very well maintained. Um, it's a very beautiful place, and there is a, a memorial plaque at the very top, um, giving respect to the people, the Wendat Huron, who created this, who came before us, uh, which is archaeology is all about. You know, it's 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 done on behalf of the people who claim uh, descendants of the people that we're investigating. Uh, so this is a, a proud piece of um, local Canadian, uh, local First Nations, um, indigenous history that is now part of um, your history available to everyone now living in, in Canada. So if you hear that the uh, there's no history in Canada, well, you're incorrect, you're completely wrong. Uh, you just need to look around us and there's history. Even a place like Scarborough, where I know a lot of people don't consider to be a very historical place, you know, there are 14th century burial mounds of the Wendat Huron people uh, right in our neighborhoods. Um, so that's all folks, uh, see you later. Thank you. Hi, Tabor Hill Memorial National Park. Um, so behind me, the Wendat Huron um, ossuary, Wendat Huron burial mound, I just wanted to say some things about uh, who the Wendat Huron were. So uh, the word Wendat Huron uh, Wendat is a word in uh, the Iroquoian language, uh, which means um, uh, island dweller or people who live on a peninsula. Um, it is how the, uh, the people who built this uh, identified it, it is thought. Uh, the term Huron is a French word referring to um, uh, an animal regarding a piece of their clothing. It's also potentially derogatory. However, the, the hyphenated combination Wendat-Huron is, is, is what is uh, preferred uh, to identify uh, the people uh, who built the ossuary uh, behind me. Uh, uh, the Wendat Huron were um, allied with the French and they were enemies of the uh, powerful five, six nation Iroquois to the south. Um, one aspect of, of uh, the political history of this region, which is pretty remarkable, is that the um, both the Wendat Huron and the Iroquois five nations, you know, they created the first democracy in North America with um, um, chiefs being elected and um, sitting on a council uh, to discuss uh, matters of, of, of war and civil society and, and things like that. Um, and one um, difference between the uh, Wendat Huron and the Iro Iroquois, Iroquois uh, to the south is that um, unlike um, um, the Iroquois, Iroquois uh, people to the south, um, although the Wendat Huron were uh, matrilineal, so they traced the uh, people's descent through the um, female aspect of, of their ancestry. Um, uh, unlike uh, the, and the Iroquois, um, women did not uh, participate in chief councils. And I believe they also were not um, uh, the ones electing um, uh, the, the sachems or, or the leaders of, of the, the tribes. Um, so, um, that would be, uh, so even though they spoke the same language, uh, the Wendat Huron were distinct from the Iroquois to the south uh, in that um, important way. Uh, but both were agriculturalists. They relied on um, corn, um, three sisters agriculture, something which um, developed into, uh, uh, from the south to the north, 
Uh, so from around 1000 AD or 800, there was the um, Osagua people, I believe they're called, um, who brought with them uh, um, uh, agriculture and agricultural techniques. And um, eventually this, this spread um, to the people in uh, here in Southern Ontario. Um, and so that's another uh, aspect of uh, North American history North American indigenous history is actually very interesting is that although we have established that um, well it's controversial but well evidence points towards that the people uh, migrated from the south to the north however a lot of cultural trends and um, developments in society have a more southern to northern trajectory of uh, development uh, so that's another um, sort of paradoxical theme of um, studying history and, and peoples and cultures in in North America is this north-south versus south-north um, uh, migration and cultural development sort of um, a map that seems to be at odds uh, with itself. Um, but yes, this is um, you know very. It's a, it's a sacred place, and uh, it is uh, important that um, you know these these places be provided for not only ourselves but other generations, especially the people who who identify as members of uh, these, these community today. Um, and once again, don't toboggan down the hill. Thank you.